Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Today, I'm gonna show y'all how to take wild lettuce, and process it down to a good usable medicine. So hang with us. On this side of me, you can see this is a, a real long oval shaped leaf. It has some serration in it. Uh, I'll pull one where you can get a good look. This is Lactuca cereola. And let me pull one of these. Now this one actually has some actual spines on it, like the prickly lettuce. Uh, I don't know if you can see them good. I'm trying to hold them against a dark area. Canadensis. Right here. You got that shape of the leaf. I also have right here Lactuca floridana. You see the difference in these three leaves? All wild lettuce. This does not really have prickles. Now there is some very, very fine hairs. If you look really, really closely, you do not feel them, okay? That's on Floridana. This is Lactuca canadensis, and it actually has, and you can see the leaves are a little more elongated, the, the lobes are, and uh, then this is Seriola. Seriola has some very fine hairs on it as well, and the canadensis has some, but the Floridana really does not. Uh, and these, these prickles, y'all, are very, very, very fine. So anyway, we're going to take a look. I'm going to show you some more of these wild lettuces I've got on the property. And, uh, and before this video is over, we're going to teach you how to cook it down and make a good usable medicine out of it. Now behind me right here is Lactuca canadensis. You see the purpling in this? You see it bleed right there? Let me bring you in so you can see that. When you cut this plant, I just nicked that with my fingernail right there. You see that like the carom? Very bitter. Mike Reed's got a good video on just using that like the carom pure bleeding the plant, catching it in a spoon and taking it. I did have a lady tell me though, however, that she did that. Oh, I stepped on the stick, y'all. I'll show you why it hurt. I don't, I, y'all, I don't wear no shoes out here in Mississippi. Ain't no need in it. Oh, uh, but anyway, she said that she took a spoonful of that, said she threw up immediately. But y'all, this is a very bitter plant. And you see how this one got broke off over here? And it multiplied out multiple stalks out. So, you know, that's going to throw somebody off trying to identify this. This plant will grow straight up one stalk all the way up. It'll grow up 12, 14 foot tall. This is not the ideal time of the year to harvest this plant to cook it. You really want to wait till it just starts to bloom. That's when the medicine's going to be at the strongest. Uh, when you're cooking it down, you do not want to boil this. If you boil it, you'll kill the lacticarium. But that white milky sap in there is where your medicine's at. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, these leaves don't contain as much lacticarium as that stalk does. That stalk is where all the medicine's at for the most part. Everybody leaves the stalk, pulls all the limbs off. When I process it, I take the whole plant. And y'all, I have an abundance of it. Uh, I like to let it seed out, but I have plenty to let seed out. I'm not going to over harvest it. In fact, it's kind of invasive. I'm going to take you up here and show you some bigger ones. Y'all, right here is where I stood and filmed my very first wild lettuce video. This is the largest wild lettuce that I have on my property. We are June 21st, 22nd, I think. This is already at close to 10 foot tall right here. This stalk right here down at the base is pushing two inches in diameter. It's at least an inch and three quarters in diameter. Dark blue stalk. This one don't have as much bluing in it. Uh, and you can see these, these several different varieties right here behind me. We've got Floridana, we've got Seriola right over here. Uh, and you can tell it by the leaves don't have the deep lobes in them. Uh, the Lactuca Floridana is got a, it's gonna have 
the deep lobes in these leaves. Uh, the Lactuca canadensis is back over yonder. It's got a more thin leaf. Some of them, and you just have to keep studying on this stuff, y'all. On these, these prickles under these big plants are very, very fine. In fact, on this plant here, you barely can even see them. So be careful when you're looking for spines to ID. Some of them have it, some of them do not. These are very fine on here, but they do have them. This smaller plant right here has more prickles than the other ones do. So, why some of them have longer prickles and others don't? Some of them even have small, so each one of these plants, even in the same species, some may have big spines, some may not have spines at all. Uh, in fact, it'll have some very, very fine hairs, but it may not be spines that you're going to feel. This plant here, I can reach under there and feel. It's, it's prickly. Uh, that one there is. If I reach under this big one, I feel slightly prickles on it. But this one over here feels smooth. Now, the closer you get to the stem, you can feel a little more. Out here toward the end, slick. And I know I turned the camera around. And I know somebody's wondering about this cup. Y'all, my daughter gave me this cup for my uh, birthday. I did not make this cup. I know most of you know that I make pottery. We're a southern mud pottery. But, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one similar to this just because it's, it's cool, y'all. Look at that cup. This is uh, wild lettuce. And the reason this gets so big right here is what I wanted to show you. You see there's a rotting hay bale right down here. And this hay bale rotting is creating a good fertilizer. This is like a garden plant. This is very similar to regular lettuce you grow in your garden. Uh, it is very bitter. You can eat it. It is an edible plant. You can cook it, put it in a salad. It's just going to be stronger. You need to pick it when it's very young to not get real bitter leaves. But this is a good medicinal plant. And the process in this, you're making pain medicine. Uh, this is a non-addictive pain medicine. It is a lot like an opioid, but it's not. Uh, it's it's mild to morphine. Uh, it's not anywhere going to be that strength. Yes, you can smoke it. Yes, it will give you a mild high. Uh, nothing like smoking marijuana or anything else. It's just going to really give you a good night's sleep and make you feel a little relaxed. You're not really going to feel a high like you think with drugs. So. Big question goes around a lot. Of, that's the first thing a lot of people want to know is, well, can you get high about it? Well, technically, yes, but really no. Uh, and I have never smoked it myself, but I have asked several people that have. So. The best thing that I have done and the easiest is to just make a tea like I did in my very first video. Do not let this plant boil. It will uh, kill the medicinal properties in that lacticarium. So you want to process it very low temperature for a long period of time to condense down. The longer you cook it, the more condensed it is, the stronger the medicinal properties in this plant. If you're going to make a tincture out of it, I encourage you to put the stalk in the tincture. Don't just use the leaves because there's a lot of medicinal value in that stalk. Y'all, it has done got bad hot in Mississippi, and that is why we out here filming early this morning. Uh, and I wanted to show y'all right here on this particular plant. Uh, I'm walking around just kind of looking at stuff. Look at these leaves right here on this right here. Bring in where you see See how long and skinny them are? See how this stalk is spotted? This is not hemlock. This is wild lettuce, okay? So you have to be careful. Every plant is not exactly, precisely the same. But look. See this? You see that yellowing in that lacticarium? This species right here is Lactuca variola. That's why the lacticarium in it is yellow and not exactly white. This is very yellow. Very white. Lactuca canadensis right here. This is on Lactuca floridana. It's 
See how white. Something I wanted to point out on this Lactuca viriola is it is already starting to bloom and it is yellow. Uh, this plant here, y'all, there is no prickles whatsoever on this particular plant. And I know everybody thinks that all of them have spines on the bottom. Is there some species with yellow flowers that do? Maybe so. This particular one does not. And it's blooming early. Uh, you've seen it bleed. And you see it bleeding there. So in case somebody's saying, you know, it is not. It is, it is wild lettuce, but look. There is not a prickle on it anywhere. It is smooth on the bottom. Some of these other species do have the prickles. So don't get caught up on it. It has to have prickles to be wild lettuce. That is, that is false. But this one is blooming yellow. Most of the other ones, I know the Floridana and the Canadensis here. And I think the uh, Seriola blooms blue or purplish in this area. Some of them bloom white. I don't remember which one. I'll know when it starts blooming. But this Virola, I know it blooms yellow. And it has a yellow lacticarium in it. Okay, before we get started processing and cooking this medicine, I want you to understand this is a very simple process. Uh, a lot of people overthink all this medicinal plant stuff. Uh, so I'm going to take my knife. I got my ulu that I made. I think I pronounced that right. Anyway, uh, I made this. This is a big knife. All I am going to do, y'all, now obviously you want to make sure that you have kind of got the creepy crawlies out of this. You're harvesting wild plants, y'all, that is what Anytime you're fooling with wild plants, this time of year, you see there's some yellowing on that. I like to pick the yellow ones off and throw them down because I have plenty of this stuff. It's actually growing right here under my shed. Look, it's growing right here beside my forge. So I'm probably going to cut all that down while I'm making this video and get that out of my shed because I'll process it and use it in this medicine. Okay, I pick all the yellowing stuff off of it throw it away because like I said, I have plenty of it. I'm inspecting it to make sure there's no bugs in it, no aphids, uh, because y'all bugs are eating on these plants. So what I'm doing is I'll take, once I kind of know there ain't nothing on there, I'm gonna just cut it up in pieces that'll fit in this crock pot, okay? I had to borrow one of Marie Laveau's crock pots And you don't have to chop this up in a blender. You can, and then once you get down past the stalk, you can just kind of tear this, put it in there. All you want to do is fit it in this crock pot. And y'all, I say crock pot because this is the safest way to cook this. And when I mean safe, I don't mean harmful to you. I mean safe as in you don't destroy the plant, the medicinal properties. If you bring this plant to a boil, and I know I'm being redundant, but there's certain things that you need to make sure you get out of this video. Do not boil this plant. If it comes to a boil, you're not going to get the medicine you're working for. And y'all, this is a lengthy process. So, but there's some little egg things on the bottom of this. Make sure you get that stuff off. You can wash all this plant good if you want to. So right here, we're going to just cut this stalk up, drop it in there. And you see I've got several different varieties I'm using. This is some of this is Seriola. I've got some Floridana. I've got uh, Lactuca canadensis in this. See how this one's got a lot of trash on it. Just throw it down. Don't make it, don't make this process harder than it is. You know what I'm saying? See these spiders on that? It's too easy to pick that off and throw it down. Normally, when my rain barrels is full, I would just dunk it in my rain barrel and pull it up. Y'all, we have, it has got dry, dry, dry here. And uh, my rain barrels are all empty. Now, we're going to pack this slam full. 
and you see those lacticarium coming out on these leaves, I urge you to go go look up Mike Reed Outdoors. Look at his video on using the, the pure lacticarium, y'all. That's a really good video. Mike, Mike Reed has some really good videos on this subject. So if I was going to try to steer you to anybody else to teach you about wild lettuce, it would be Mike Reed. He knows more about this plant than I do, y'all. And he makes really good videos, a wealth of knowledge in medicinal plants. And if you don't already follow him, I urge you to go follow Mike Reed if you're interested in medicinal plants. I'm gonna cut these plants behind the camera down. I'm gonna use this knife right here and I wanna make mention. My buddy Don Lanier gave me this, mailed it to me for my birthday. Don, thank you so much. I wanna give you a shout out on this video for that. Oh, really good knife, y'all. This is a handmade folding knife. And he sent me some other goodies, fire kit. You'll see all this stuff later on. Some fishing lures. Sent me a little birthday package, so thank you for it. I really appreciate it. Okay. So I can put my knife back up. I don't want to nasty it all up, but I did want to use it and show it in this video because I did cut the rest of this down with it. See right here? Classic example. This is why you want to be careful and inspect your stuff. Look at it good. You're going to cook it long enough it's going to kill anything that's going to hurt you probably. So I'm just going to pick the... Pick the leaves off. Now, y'all, if you mince this up, chop it up good, it'll probably help. <laughs> oh. Right here, I'm just going to tear it in a couple of properties, but it's going to cook long enough that I'm going to get the medicine out of it. So, okay. Throw so all that stalk in there. And y'all, as this cooks down, it'll settle down in there more, okay? Okay, I went and got me a jug of just pure, clean water. Now, I'm going to cover this. See it rising? Okay, now I'm going to plug my pot up over here. Now I am going to put it on high for a little while. After it cooks for a few hours and this starts to condense down, I'm going to put the lid on it for right now. Oh, it has a hole in this lid so it can evaporate some. Once I get it cooked good and I know it's condensed and sinking down in this pot good completely cold water I'll pull this top off and I will not cook it on high the whole time oh uh, because we're gonna condense this really down to a really condensed medicine so it'll take several hours really probably be tomorrow before we done with this so this is a lengthy process uh, but it's easy y'all the crock pot is kind of a foolproof method uh, my last video, I did a double boiler. Uh, the first video I did, I did a single pot. We just cooked it over a fish cooker. And that works, y'all, but you're very risky about letting it come to a boil because you still got to cook it for three or four hours to get a good tea out of it. Uh, and I have tried to do, like, the dried leaf and make a tea like I do my goldenrod and my other plants. And y'all, I have not had great success with making a good medicine that way or feeling the effects of it. You want a really good medicine, I, I urge you to take you a couple of plants and cook this down. Uh, now, once you condense this way, way down to it's like a black tar, the longer you cook it, the more condensed it's going to get. Uh, once it starts getting down to a black tar, you really need to take it and put it in a saucepan where you can stir it and really cook it down really low and uh, it'll get like a gummy tar. You can dry it and grind it into a powder and it is shelf stable at that point. This tea is not gonna last you a long while. I've put it in the refrigerator and kept it for a good while that way. Okay, y'all, this same day, different shirt. This is my second shirt of the day. <laughs> but as late as this, about four o'clock. So while I've been working and doing my other stuff, I've just let this cook on high all day. 
So what I've done is I've got a good dark liquid in here and uh, made sure that I've cooked hot. Most of the medicinal properties are into the water, been hot all day. Uh, I'm just kind of mashing on it. So what I'm going to do now is pour it into this stainless steel stock pot right here. Now for right now, I'm going to pour the whole thing in here. Before I cook it, if you can see, see how dark that liquid is? Now that is about an inch and a half deep in this pot right here. You see how dark it is? That is from it infusing all day. So what I'm fixing to do is I'm fixing to turn the heat up and simmer this just a little bit, not boil it, not really get bubbles in it, but we're just going to heat it up a little hotter and I'm going to process this and then we're going to strain everything we can out. Now I'm going to have to stay with this. The reason I used the crock pot today to heat it up, took my time, got all the medicine that I can get out of here. Now y'all, here's, here's the kicker on this whole deal. No matter how much work you go to it, how much plant medicine you do, if you don't extract all the medicine you can out of this plant, it don't matter how much, how long you cook it, don't matter what you do with it. So what, it, what material you've got you want to make sure you get all the medicine you can out of it. So just like any tincture, any infusion, anything you do, you want to squeeze this plant material and get everything you can get out of it before we finish processing this down into a, a, a really condensed medicine. Okay, I've had this just like on a simmer. It's, it's just barely a few bubbles every now and then uh, because redundantly again if you bring this to a boil you're going to defeat the whole purpose and kill your medicinal properties okay so what i'm doing is grabbing these pieces out and i'm going to put them in this so that i can squeeze the juice out of them oh uh, if you had a french press something like that i mean i'm sure you can go buy something to effectively do this a lot better than the way I'm doing it, okay? I, I'm just, I grab whatever I can find laying around, I reuse, repurpose, and y'all, if, if, and I know a lot of you probably that see this are not watching my channel every day, and a lot of you watch me every day know that that's just the way I do things. So I'm gonna get this out, all of it that I can, and we're gonna squeeze it as best we can and get all the juice, all the medicinal qualities out. And y'all, we have about an inch and a half. It's sitting down on this side a little bit. It's a little deeper on this side, but it's a very dark liquid. And uh, I don't want to add any more water to it uh, because you will start diluting it down. So I don't want to do that. And y'all, this is edible if you wanted to eat it like turnip grains. Nothing wrong with eating this, just like it eats. Put it with some cornbread. Man. It actually has a pleasant smell. I do know that it is bitter. Because <laughs> I done tasted it before. Oh. But the, the tea in this right now, y'all, is not really that bad. Oh. Honest to goodness, it is, it's not. Okay, now I have got my dibbler, but it's cleaned up, y'all. I, I didn't uh, just leave it nasty. And what I'm going to do is squeeze this, press it, pulverize it, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I'm just mashing it down to where I can get the juice out of it, okay? See how much I got out of there? We're gonna keep doing it. There's a bunch more in there. 
Yeah, I see it now. That, that heat up. See that liquid coming off of there? I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to get the rest of this off and then I'll pick y'all back up in a little bit. Y'all, I'm having to get a pan with a little bit thicker bottom on it. This little stainless steel boiler is too thin for this hot once the heat the liquid starts coming off of it. It has already busted a hole in it in two places. Okay, I don't know if you can, if you can see, I'm trying to hold it without getting burnt. Right there. There's a hole going up this way, one there, and I don't know if those others are pole, but y'all be careful with that. You see these little pieces of that leaf left in there? I'm gonna get that out as I find it. But it won't stick as bad. This is a thicker pan. Get those little pieces of leaf in there out. See how that is turning syrupy? Getting very, very thick. Okay, y'all, we start to get to almost to a tar-like consistency, a syrupy-like. I don't know how you want to describe this, but you see the... Uh, any of the leaf matter is getting dried up real quick now. But I don't know that I'm going to take it out. I think I'm going to leave it in there because there's a lot of medicine stuck to it. So I don't think it'll hurt nothing. But you see how it's getting really, really syrupy? Y'all, we just about to what we want. I just wanted you to get a really good look. All you're doing is evaporating all the water out of the medicinal. And you just really, really condensed down is all this is. There's no mad science to it. It's just, you just got to slowly cook all the water out without killing your medicinal properties by boiling it. <clears throat> and right here, if you're not careful, you'll get it too hot. Cause you ain't got but a little bit so that's why you keep moving it keep stirring it all right y'all this is, is getting getting very very fast now you see what's it's sticking to everything you see we're getting condensed down to we just i'm having to be very very careful with it to not let it stick too bad and burn. That's why I'm picking it up off this fire. But you see, we're getting to a really thick, thick consistency. See that? And when you go over them bubbles like that, you take a lot of moisture out really, really fast. You see how it's surfed up? It's getting gooey now. We just about what I want. We can evaporate the rest of this out, I think. All right, I better cut that fire off. You 
y'all see that? You see how thick that is? I had to get it up off that fire. We fixing to go get something and, and uh, put this all in a bowl here. Yeah. All right. Y'all go get you a new one of these rubber spatulas to use. Don't use this wood. Well, you might want to use wood. But, uh, you see how that's getting very, very thick. I can't get that circus stuff off of there. But you probably don't want to use one of these things right here. It's got a little dab of paint on it. You, you probably need to go get you a brand whooping new one. See, it's already crystallizing in there. Lord Jesus, how am I going to get all of that out of there? This thing too flimsy. But I need it to get down in these curves. <laughs> Y'all, this is some gooey stuff now. I may have to get me a little dab of water, but I'm going to scrape all I can get out of here first before I, before I resort to using any water on it. Now I know, I know the million dollar, I know the million dollar question is, you know it's not as bitter as I expected it. God, it's serpent now. I have got to come up with something to really scrape this mess out of here. As it hardens, I'm going to have to scratch this out as a, uh, you see how this is standing up? This is a really, really gooey. So that's as about as condensed as you can get wild lettuce, y'all. Anyway, y'all. Wild lettuce medicine. Anyway, y'all see that we have got a tarred consistency and it is getting hard, sticky, sticky. Keep up my videos. I'll update, you know, in a day or two on some of my other videos, the effects that it had, maybe using it, or if I think it's stronger or whatever, if you'll subscribe to this channel and keep up with what we're doing uh, you'll find out a little more about it as I said in this video y'all I have learned a lot about wild lettuce in the last two or three years since I made my first wild lettuce video Yeah, that pocket knife is a way to get, look at there. Look at that tar. At least I know I can collect it all. I, I'm just really trying to gather up all of it that I can get. But anyway, I'm going to work on getting all this <laughs> and see what, what the deal is with it. Look. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. I hope this video helped some of you, helped you uh, maybe learn how to use some wild lettuce. There is a couple of people that has done this. Uh, so I'm going to share this video everywhere. Uh, there's not a lot to this, y'all. It wasn't hard. It's just making sure you stay with it. Uh, the crock pot was money as far as letting it go today so that I could work and do everything else I had to do and it extracted all the medicine out of that plant that I could use and then basically I put it on this other pot you need to make sure you don't do like I did and use that thin boiler uh, 
crack the bottom of it when it got down to where it was dry in areas go to something like this boiler here and i don't know what name this boiler is y'all this is an old boiler i have had for years come with a set oh uh, i don't even see a name on it but anyway it has a good thick solid bottom on it that's what you need for the finishing product when it starts getting down to really thin you got to stay there with it and stir it at that point don't walk off and leave it or you won't have nothing but anyway, thank y'all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Hope you learned something about wild lettuce. Look, use it for your pain. You may not be able to go get pain medicine before long. So thank y'all for watching. We'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. And we'll see y'all.